In this video, I'm going to help you get started in HoneyBook because it can feel like a lot and it can be really overwhelming at first. So what are the first few things that you need to do? So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer. I love to teach people how to start and run successful creative businesses. And part of that is having a good client management system. A lot of us are not using our client management systems to their fullest extent. So that's what this video is here to help you with and just help you actually dive in and get started. I do have a code for 50% off HoneyBook. If you want to check that out in the description, I'd really appreciate if you would use that if you enjoyed this video. And we have a whole playlist on HoneyBook and a bunch of other client management systems if you want to check out the options. Some of the best advice I've heard about client management systems like this is just to start somewhere and it will kind of all come full circle. There's a lot of things that you need to do before you're really feeling like the full magic. But the good thing is all the work happens up front and then you kind of get to relax and don't have to do a lot. So that's one of the reasons it's hard to get started, but it's actually the full magic of a system like this. So the first thing you want to do is just set up your company settings. So you can do um, a lot of personal stuff here, your branding, your button colors, your images. Um, you can take a look at some other brands, which is really nice. Uh, your smart file theme is going to be really cool. I have a whole other video on those, but we'll cover them briefly. Uh, but you want to kind of customize this to your colors and your fonts and everything that you're going to want to show your branding. I love that HoneyBook has so many kind of brand customization features because it can really look like it's part of your company as opposed to this other company. Email signature, about, and then all of your social handles and things like that. In preferences, the main thing is like your company notifications. Definitely uh, want to set some of these things up, payment reminders, things like that, just so that you have all of that ready to go. Your client portal can be something for another day. Integrations, if you are planning to use any of these that you see on screen, um, definitely go ahead and set them up, but you'll definitely want to start with your email integration. If you do use Gmail for your business email, it's going to absolutely be a game changer with HoneyBook. So go ahead and set that up. It's really easy. And then of course you'll want your bank and account details so that you can accept and send payments. So your instant deposit account will allow you to receive the funds as soon as your client pays. Um, and then you want to have your accepted payment methods. So you can do card payments, ACH payments. HoneyBook is its own payment processor and the fees here um, are listed for you. That can be really helpful because you don't have to integrate it with any other accounts that you have. And then your tax information, I wouldn't even say it's the first thing you should do, but go ahead and fill it out while you're thinking about it. And then you have all of your settings ready to go. Now, the first thing that I would do here is your contact form. So head over there. And this is basically going to be like a lead capture form or a contact form on your website. So it can look just like part of your website. If you want to embed it, you can also send it via a link to a potential client and it's going to connect any information that you need and go ahead and bring it into HoneyBook. That way you won't have to add people as contacts. They'll already be in here. So set up this lead contact form with anything that you need here. Um, I definitely recommend putting estimated budget section. Um, how did you find us that HoneyBook can track all of your different lead sources and give you reporting based on those. So it's a really great option to have on your form here. And you can use any of these different uh, fields to add into the form. While you're working, you don't have to publish the changes, but then you can just click publish the changes. Now you have the ability to put it on your Squarespace website, or you can copy this code and embed it on any other website that you need. We want to start there because that's what gets clients into HoneyBook in the first place. And then every time you have someone fill out that form, it will create a new project for them. So they are going to appear right here. Yay. A side step, if you do use G Suite, is I would make sure you look at the Chrome extension. Um, I have a whole other video on that. It doesn't apply if you don't use G Suite, but if it does, you'll want to get that installed so that you can basically bring HoneyBook into your inbox. It's super helpful, so definitely set that up. The next step, I'm actually going to take you off HoneyBook because I think it's important to understand what your process for your business looks like before you do anything else here on HoneyBook. So this is a blank process flow diagram. It's going to be linked in the uh, description of this video for you to go ahead and download. So this is mapping out everything that happens between when your client contacts you and when your client last contacts you or you follow up with them after this project. And if you start to think, wow, I don't really know what happens next, then that's a sign that you need to develop your process a little bit further. But as you map this out, there's going to be kind of a blank space in here because so many processes, you know, you could have 
300 steps for a process then I might only have two. Um, but make it work for yourself, draw it out, use this diagram, whatever you want, and start to notice things where you might be able to automate. So for instance, um, the smart files on HoneyBook can put your contract, invoice, and proposal all in the same step. So you can cut that down from three steps to one. Um, if you have a form that you're sending out, you can go ahead and make that a form on HoneyBook and put it in your process flow there. So cut that out. You Any emails that you're sending over and over, whether it's a pricing guide or just information, those are things that you can start doing in HoneyBook. There are three main things you'll want to do in HoneyBook and your process flow is going to dictate kind of what comes next. So we have packages, we have emails, and we have contact forms. I think the easiest one to start with is packages. So this is just building out every service offering that you have and having these in here, you're then going to be able to use them in your invoices and smart files. So for instance, I have this uh, wax seal, one, 250. That's all it is. Or I have more aggressive packages like a three-piece suite that has a design fee, a production, um, calligraphy, guest address, and shipping. And you can add little pictures here. You can add descriptions. You can do a lot of things. Um, I really like HoneyBook's invoicing, and I have another video on that if you want to dive deeper. So go ahead and set up all of your packages for any of your common offerings. You don't need to get into everything right now, but your main offerings should be here. Once you have your packages, you could move ahead to smart files, which I'll link a larger video on. However, I think we should start with emails because they are a little bit simpler at this point. So an email is anything that you're sending over and over again. So you might have a reminder. This is something that's default. So, hey, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, I sent over this information. Reach out if you have any questions. So this would be if I sent them a file to fill out and they didn't, then I can send that over. Um, you can do thank yous. You can change what is going on your automatic invoice or proposal emails or your questionnaire emails. Um, welcome to the family could be something like, hey, thanks for signing the contract and paying your deposit. Here's an approximate timeline and a link to two blog posts that you might find helpful. For me, I link the address etiquette for invitations because I'm a wedding invitation designer and then also the wording etiquette blog post. So those are just two resources I have that clients find helpful. Um, throughout the design process. So any email that you're sending a lot of, maybe it's your reaching out to a wedding planner, maybe it's your uh, welcome to the family, maybe it's your thanks for signing the contract or your please give me your review email, any of those that you're sending multiple times, you can make a template here um, so you don't have to keep typing them or copy and pasting. And then after you've covered those emails, you can dive into smart files. I'm not gonna go too far into this, but I am gonna show you one example. And these are all the different things you can have within a smart file. So you can have an invoice, a contract, questionnaire, service offerings, like a proposal, and your scheduler. So here's an example of one that I use for our wedding invitation proofs. And we have text, we have photos, we have on the second page, we have some questions here for them to fill out about the invitation proof that's on this page. And then if we skip over to the final page, we have um, a recap of the overall design, another few questions for them in case they didn't list any changes on the previous pages. And then down here they have the proof approval. And this is actually a contract block that they have to sign as a legal uh, binding signature. And you know, HoneyBook captures their information when they sign it. So we have that fully approved um, for print. So this is really important to me as a graphic designer. You can put um, a questionnaire together in smart files. You can put a proposal together that then leads to the invoice and the contract. So so basically, this is where everything starts to connect. But if you don't have the packages built out, um, if you don't have the emails built out, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So start out by getting your company settings set where you want them and then get your contact form so you can actually get your leads into HoneyBook in the first place. And then once you do that, as needed a little bit, you can start setting up like emails, packages, contact forms, um, additional questionnaires, etc. through smart files so that it's not so overwhelming and you're not trying to do all of it at once. We wanna just kind of start with the things that are overarching and important and get you kind of started in the system. And then as you're working with each client, you can add a new questionnaire as needed or add a new uh, proof form as needed, those kind of things. I have a longer video on Smart Files that will dive deeper into that because that's really where the magic starts to happen. And then you can actually start even automating some of these things as well. 
Of course, we have another video about that. I said that a million times, uh, but I want to just get you started to the point where you're actually using this, collecting leads here and seeing all of the different projects that you have here at HoneyBook. And then you can start refining it to use to really get the full potential out of it. All right, so definitely dive deeper in some of our other videos on some of these services. But for now, just try to keep it really simple. Get started, get your leads in here, and then you can work on some of those more complicated things. Let me know what questions you have about HoneyBook. And if you would be willing to use my code, you can get 50% off. And I really appreciate that. I'll link it for you in the description. Thanks, everyone.